Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. I do a lot of TV box reviews here on the channel, but I haven't really talked about what I am using in a while. So I thought I would do an update video and let you know what I've got connected up to all of my televisions throughout the house. I don't have a lot of time to actually watch anything on these TVs, but it's fun to hook things up to them and see what works best. And we're going to take a look at three televisions, aging televisions, and what I am using with them. But before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I've paid for most of what you're going to see here with my own funds, although there are a few items that came in from manufacturers or other review programs, and I'll disclose that as we go. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what I've got hooked up to all my televisions here around the house. So let's start off with my oldest television, which is in my kid's playroom. This one doesn't get used all that much. As you can see, it's a really old LG, probably from around 2008 or 2009. Hooked up to that television is a second generation NVIDIA Shield, along with an Xbox 360. There's still a couple of games on the 360 that I like to play that are not available on the backwards compatibility on the Xbox One. But this television really is only used when we have family visiting and the kids want to watch something together. Typically, it is off most of the time. You will notice, though, that this is all hooked up via Ethernet. Uh, because in that spot, I have one of my Unify Wi-Fi access points that has an Ethernet cable running all the way back to my equipment closet. And my general philosophy is that if you have something that you can connect via Ethernet and use conveniently in that fashion, you should do that to take the load off the Wi-Fi. So that's what we have going on in that room. On that NVIDIA Shield, we've got all the basic apps that the kids like, like Disney+. Plus. We have the HD Home Run app on there as well. But again, that room isn't used all that heavily. Now, next up is my bedroom television. This is a 4K Samsung television that I got at a really good price back in 2016 during a Prime Day sale. I paid $549 for it. The TV does support some HDR functionality, but not much. So I found that most of the apps that you might run on a modern television box don't seem to switch the TV into any kind of HDR mode. And of course, it doesn't support Dolby Vision or anything like that. But for a bedroom TV where I'm watching a couple minutes of YouTube before I conk out, it actually works out quite nicely for me. And of course, anything in 4K does run at the native resolution. Now, when I first got it, all of the apps on it were current and up to date. Now, of course, that is changing. So although it does have a good selection of some of the more popular apps out there, some of the newer services like uh, Discovery Plus and Apple TV Plus and Peacock are not on the set. Additionally, HD Home Run, which is what I use for watching live TV, was never available on it ever. So I had an NVIDIA Shield plugged into it. And plugged into that TV was my original Shield from 2015. That's still working just fine. However, what I was using the Shield primarily for was its ability to do private listening through its game controller. So what I used to do was uh, hook up a pair of headphones into the game controller's port here and listen to uh, the TV without disturbing my wife. But uh, over the years, this stopped working very well. So the controller's battery would die very quickly and it was having a hard time maintaining a good quality signal back to the Shield, even though it was only just a couple of feet across the room. So that combined with the fact that the recent NVIDIA Shield update kind of inundated the device with ads had me hooking up an Apple TV to see if I, that might work better for me. And it really has uh, because the Apple TV, of course, supports my AirPods and it syncs up to them uh, pretty seamlessly. And it's also very easy to get them to reconnect back to my phone. In most cases, when I go and take the dog out for a walk, the AirPods just automatically repair to the phone and I'm off and running again. But beyond that, the Apple TV, of course, supports all of the apps that I'm subscribed to. The HD Home Run app works great on it for live TV and my DVR recordings. And one of the best parts about the Apple TV is that if you put the photo app in the first app on the top row there, uh, what you'll get when you turn it on is a ongoing uh, display, a slideshow, if you will, of all of your photo history from your iCloud account. So every time we turn the TV on, my wife sees pictures of the family and of the kids. So it's definitely a lot nicer to see that versus all the ads that pop up on the Android TV interface these days. What's also fun about the photo albums is that you can often spend an hour or two just watching what the Apple TV has randomly selected from the photo library. And what it does is it sets your photos to music. It'll integrate videos if you happen to have shot video clips along with the photos that you were taking. 
and then it also will play back some of the live photos as well. So it's just fun how it all works and it's always changing up what it's presenting to you uh, on the photo album. And sometimes we watch that versus a TV show because it's always fun to see some old pictures of the kids that you hadn't looked at in a while. So next we're going to move upstairs to the flagship, which is my LG C7 OLED that I bought back in 2017. This is a 65 inch display and I did a full review of it when I first picked it up. It is still a television that I enjoy looking at every time I turn it on. I have never owned a TV that I've liked as much as this one. And as many of you know, I'm a big science fiction fan, so all my space shows just look great on that OLED contrast ratio. And I've had no reason to want to upgrade this television. It's still perfectly fine for the things that I watch on it. Certainly the newer OLEDs might be a little brighter, they have faster refresh rates and variable refresh rates, but for me, 60 hertz is more than enough and the TV just looks spectacular. Now hooked up to that TV is a bunch of stuff and we'll start uh, with an NVIDIA Shield. I have the most recent one, I believe the 2019 revision that added some of the Dolby Vision support. But I'm using the NVIDIA Shield on that television only for Plex at this point because the NVIDIA Shield doesn't handle 24p very well at the moment. That might improve when it gets another firmware update, but right now most of the TV apps that I watch with 24p content are being presented at 60 on my television, and I'm seeing a lot of frame judders as a result of that. Plex, of course, works fine on the Shield. The Shield is the absolute best Plex client, especially for Plex Pro serving from my home server here at the house. So all of my 4K Blu-ray rips work great. Everything plays great on Plex through it, but that's really all I'm using the Shield for at this point. I also use the Shield for game streaming on occasion. I was using NVIDIA Game Stream until they got rid of that, or they will be getting rid of it. Uh, so I will be coming up with a different solution for in-home streaming, but I've also been playing around a lot with the GeForce Now service because a few of the games that I play are available on GeForce Now, and the Shield works great with that. Again, connected over Ethernet. Now the TV is a smart television running LG's WebOS, but its processor is glacially slow, and it's getting worse and worse by the year. So for a while, I was actually watching most of my 24P content using the television's built-in apps, and I was able to get the Atmos audio out of those apps via the ARC connection to my receiver, which I'll talk about in a minute. However, uh, things have been getting slower and slower on this television to the point where apps like Apple TV take forever to even navigate, let alone play back some content, and the apps are beginning to crash a lot more frequently. So that led me once again to the Apple TV. And on that television, I have uh, the newest Apple TV that we reviewed a few weeks ago. And that's working, of course, quite well on the television. And one of the best parts about the Apple TV is that at the moment, it is the best device for automatic 24p switching. So every uh, app that supports 24p is automatically switching the television to the right mode and then switching it back when it's done. And I haven't found another device like it that does that as well as the Apple TV does. Plus you don't have all of the advertising going on. Additionally, the LG television is missing some apps. It doesn't have HBO Max, for example, and it doesn't have, I think, Discovery Plus and a few other things that my wife is watching these days. So we're starting to see this older version of WebOS begin to become obsolete. And so again, having that secondary box is going to be a lot more important. Now back in 2018, I did a tour of my home theater setup and I have changed absolutely nothing since that video. One of the things about me is that when I find something that works, I don't like just replacing it for the sake of replacing it. And so I haven't found any reason to upgrade anything, and that includes the television, the speakers, and the receiver. And my speakers are actually pretty old speakers, but if you got a good pair of speakers, they tend to stay good for a long period of time. Now the receiver I'm using up there is no longer manufactured, but it's from Yamaha. It is an RXA2070, and this is where all of my stuff kind of routes in. So I've got the Apple TV plugged into it along with the Nvidia Shield and all the game consoles that I'll talk about in a second. So all of that stuff goes into the receiver and then out to the television and to the speakers. And it works quite well and I've never had any issues with it. And again, I'm very pleased with how it sounds. One of the things that I love about the Yamaha receiver is that it has an HDMI input on the front 
So if I want to hook up my mister to do some retro gaming, I can move the mister from my computer monitor on the other side of the room and plug it into that front port for some console gaming and then easily take it back to where I had it earlier. I could plug in my RetroTank 5X upscaler if I want to connect the retro console to the television. It's just nice having something front and center that I can plug something in very quickly on a temporary basis and then take it back out again. And that's just one of the little things that I like about that receiver and perhaps something you should look for, especially if you're a retro gaming enthusiast like me, so you can very quickly move things in and out of your configuration without having to climb behind uh, your system in the mess of wires that you probably have back there like I do. Now for gaming, I've got an Xbox Series X attached up to the receiver and then of course onto the television. That works quite well, and I'm surprised by how good its 4K gaming performance is. For the most part, that's what I game on these days when I'm sitting on the couch. I have in the past connected my gaming PC, which is much more powerful than the Xbox, uh, using a long fiber optic HDMI cable, but I found that the Series X delivers a 4K experience that for me is good enough, at least for the games that I play. So I haven't really used the PC on the television all that much recently. And I have a Game Pass Ultimate account, so there's always something to play. I don't have a lot of time to play the in-depth, long, you know, 50, 60 hour games anymore, but the games that I'm into are on the Xbox and I can boot them up and play them pretty quickly. Again, I've got everything connected via Ethernet, so those games download uh, pretty quickly to the console. Another thing I've been playing around with on the Xbox is emulation. And there are a number of popular emulators available for the Xbox now, including Dolphin and uh, RetroArch. And I've been playing a lot of Sega uh, Super Scaler games on the Xbox recently, including Afterburner, which is one of my favorites. So the Xbox is be becoming more of a go-to for me. The only thing that I wish the Xbox did better is media playback. So although it has a good selection of streaming media apps to play with there, including all the usuals like YouTube and HBO and everything, it does not do the 24p switching very well on most of them. And the other issue I have with the Xbox is that its Blu-ray player doesn't support Dolby Vision. If it did, I would probably be using the Xbox a lot more for media consumption beyond gaming. Uh, but it's still not quite there as a media streamer, but it's very, very close. And if you saw my video I did recently comparing different types of Plex boxes, you can also see for Plex Pro, it is very close to being perfect there too. So I think a few software updates might make the Xbox more of an elevated uh, piece of equipment in the suite here, but right now it's mostly used for gaming. And of course we have a Nintendo Switch hooked up to the television. The docking station I'm using actually has the guts of a regular Nintendo Switch dock, but I got a little kit that turned it into something portable, so if we travel somewhere, we can bring the Switch with us without having to bring that big bulky dock, yet the guts are all stock Nintendo guts, so we don't have to worry about the Switch getting burned out or anything like that. I have an OG Switch. This is one of the launch week Switches that I bought, luckily, right when it came out. And in fact, that was the very first video I shot as a full-time YouTuber was my review of the Nintendo Switch. My kids love the console, as do I, and it looks really nice on the OLED TV, even though it's running at a 1080p resolution. And I think it's just a testament to how talented Nintendo's game programmers are, not only to make a lot of fun games to play, but make those games look good with hardware that is getting quite old. And finally, we have the Panasonic DP-UB820. This is a 4K Blu-ray player that in full disclosure came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program a few years ago. I've got a full review of it up on the channel, so definitely check it out. It is very feature rich. It does support all of the latest 4K video formats, including Dolby Vision and lossless Atmos audio, along with all the DTS stuff. And it's really nice, not only for the 4K playback, but also 1080p Blu-rays and of course standard definition DVDs. It has a really nice upscaler built in for the older films that make them look quite nice on the 4K television as well. And there's not a lot of settings to tweak to get things to look good either. It switches everything into the proper modes automatically and I found it to be a very solid player, although it is a bit on the pricey side coming in at over $400, but it's a good player nonetheless. I would be using the Xbox a lot more if it did support Dolby Vision, but because it doesn't on the Blu-ray side, the player is what I use when I've got movies to watch on disc. 
So for the most part, I'm using the Apple TV a lot more than I used to, although the NVIDIA Shield is still my go-to device for Plex Pro content. So in the interim here, we've got two players now that I'm using quite frequently depending on the use case. And maybe when we update this video a year from now, I'll have one player that will do everything. But I've been at this now for quite a while, and I have yet to find a player that has become my go-to everything player. But stay tuned. There's always more developments to come here. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.